Preferences allow you to modify the way that Photoshop behaves in a multitude of different ways, from the brightness of the interface color to the way that a tool appears on screen. Now, the big difference between the Mac and the PC is where to find preferences. On a PC, you'll find them under the edit menu, right down at the bottom. On the Mac, I'll have to go to Photoshop and then preferences. Once you get to the sub menu on the Mac and the PC, the experience is more or less identical. I'll click on general. Notice it has a keyboard shortcut of command and K or control K on a PC. Here we have on the left hand side, a list of categories. When you click on one of those categories, the options appear on the right hand side. In the case of interface, this is one of those examples where it's down to a personal preference. You can change the color theme of the interface. The default is medium dark, but you can click on medium light and light, or even go to the darkest version at the opposite side. It really does depend on whichever you find easiest on your eye. Um, there's no difference in the way that you perceive colors on screen. These all use neutral grays. For me personally, I prefer to work in medium dark, but when I'm working on screen and demonstrating in examples like this, I prefer to use the lighter version so that my cursor is a little bit more contrasting as a dark cursor on a light background. But you can change these at any time. There are a few options within the preferences that I'd say from the outset change for a better experience. First of which is under workspace, choose auto collapse iconic panels, meaning that when we have panels like here on the side of the screen, when you click, it pops open, but when you click in a different area, it will disappear. That can be very handy. If you want it to remain open, then leave that checkbox turned off. Under tools, well, from here, I would suggest you turn on zoom with scroll wheel. If your mouse contains a scroll wheel, as many do these days, you can use that to zoom and you won't even have to click on the zoom tool in the tools panel. Zoom click point to center will make your zooming more accurate. So when you hover over something, it will be more precise about how it zooms in and then focuses on the region where your cursor is. Over scroll is in particularly handy because what it will allow you to do is use the hand tool to pan the corner of your image and see the corner and the edges beyond your artwork. So that if you need to work into the edges of your image, it will allow you to do that. Under cursors, uh, here there is an example of what a painting cursor looks like, usually shown as a circle. Inside of that ring region will be filled with color. Beyond that, if the brush has got soft edges to it, then it will fade gradually, slightly larger than the size of that ring region, something worth bearing in mind. If you wish that ring region to identify not only where the solid color will be, but also to the limit of where the softer edges of your brush is, you can choose a full size brush tip. However, from experience, I tend to find that makes you too cautious using a brush. So I go back to the normal option in there. It's certainly worth turning on the checkbox for show crosshair in brush tip. It'll put a target in the middle, making some of the cloning and healing and retouching tools more accurate to work with. Under other cursors, well, you might find that the standard option, which makes it look like the tool icon, isn't very helpful. So instead, turn on precise and certainly for some of the selection tools, it makes them far easier to use and makes them more predictable in their outcomes. From here, I'll go up to the top and I'll click OK. That will change many, but maybe not all of the options. There are one or two options in here that in preferences will require a restart. But when you click OK, generally the things that you've turned on or turned off will start to work accordingly. It's only until you go to the file menu and you choose quit on a PC or perhaps on a Mac Photoshop and quit when it actually saves those changes to your preferences. For me, that will be the next logical step to take. Close down Photoshop, save those preferences, and they'll remain the same until you choose to alter them yourself. If you do have a crash and you haven't quit Photoshop naturally, then you'll have to go back through all those preference options and change them again. But that's how you can edit some examples of preferences inside of Adobe Photoshop.